Today's adventure brings me to Astoria, Oregon. As a recording of this, Wednesday, February 8th, 2023, and as I'm sure, as noted in the excitement of my voice, I am really happy to be here. I feel like this is a culmination throughout the course of my life. Why has it taken me so long to set foot on the stomping grounds, the goondocks, the goonies, the 1985 classic film, Steven Spielberg story. Richard Donner, who also directed Superman, one of my favorites, directed it. Chris Columbus, noted for many other films, wrote the screenplay. I have made it. Welcome, everyone. Adam the Woo here. Wearing an appropriate t-shirt. Nice, crisp, cool. I am not going to reinvent the wheel on this one. I am not going to do anything that has not been done at least a dozen or more times. That car could probably use some brakes. I am just going to pay an homage to one of the greatest 80s films. 1985, another movie that's my favorite. Came out at 85, Back to the Future. I love the era of the 80s. And I am going to go around to the, the filming locations from the Goonies here in Astoria, Oregon. And just show my perspective and update, a 2023 update on the town, even though I've never been here before. Others have. I'm gonna put my own little spin on it. Join me. I am so happy, I, I, I am really in a good mood to be here. Join me, shall you? I feel like some of these spots I'm not even gonna have to do a heck of a lot of research on. I can just find on my own accord driving around town. In fact, I was passing right by this and said, this really looks familiar because this is the spot where Rosalita was trying to cross the road during the chase scene at the beginning. It's also a coffee shop. If they're open, I'm gonna get myself a piping hot caffeinated beverage here at Astoria Coffee Company and Roasters. They also have a little vending machine you can purchase the Astoria coffee. Well, they may not even be open. Maybe they are. Drink coffee, pet dogs. And they are in fact open and they are going to make a fresh, fresh cup of coffee for me here. Astoria Coffee Company with the famous bridge over there. And it looks like they even embrace the, the Goonies in here as well. But of course, you know, Goonies never say die. Stepped outside now looking at One-Eyed Willie who's going over the treasure map and everything. Even has some, some gold down there and jewels, the blooms. But this would have been the road, the crosswalk here at Leif Erikson Drive in 37. The Rosalita with her umbrella tried to go across the road and I can definitely see it was very difficult and even to this day it's very very busy. There's not even a, you know, it's not a police chief with a Jeep or anything like that but kind of get the same vibe as her trying to cross the road over here. All right, it's opened up for me now. I can go over, give them time to make the coffee inside. I may have been the first customer of the day. Or maybe the it's so busy that they have to make more. Take a look right there. The building is painted a different color than it was. See if I can pull up what it looked like back in the mid 80s. Back then it was painted blue, but it still has the same like little overhang there, the little grates on the side, incline of the hill. There she is looking back and forth. Opening credit sequence, very dramatic, very, very dramatic. This is really awesome. Good first spot. And I'm gonna get a little caffeine to get the day going. Prepared, freshly brewed. Talking to the lady inside, let me chase this first. Oh yeah, that's good. I probably should have put a little tiny bit more cream and sugar in it. I'm pretty good, that's my own. The coffee's good. 
I was talking to the lady inside here. That was the place that works here. She was saying this was built in the late 1800s. Like 1895, give or take. There's a couple photos in there from back in the day. And they really do embrace the film, the history of the film. And they obviously merchandise them some assorted items, postcards, coffee mugs, things like that inside there as well. I'm glad I stopped off here to get a little, get caffeinated and getting on with my Goonies day. Continued on about another mile or so up into this neighborhood. Very hilly around here. A lot of elevation going up the sides of hills. A lot of old homes. Just a really cool vibe through here. This house over here still looks the same, as you can see out of the kitchen window of Mouth's house. The front of the home also was shown one other time a little bit later, but in the kind of the opening sequence when the chase is happening, he's looking out the window and sees the cars going this way, thinks it's the TV. Okay, even this home has also been repainted. Have the plumber out front, Mad Jack's plumber. The vehicle's parked in the front of the driveway. The garage door was opened. Only shown for a brief moment, but definitely etched, etched in my head, and I'm sure others as well, with the plumbing vehicle right over here. Even the same brick, brick wall over there. You can even kind of match up some of the different hues and coloration on the bricks. As the chase kind of progresses, so you see the bricks over there, as the chase progresses up the side of the hill here. Obviously they were filming in the road, but yeah, the plumbing vehicle was right here and there's those bricks over in the side. This is what the front of the house looks like. I guess that would be the kitchen window, probably right there, they're looking out of. Yeah, most likely, that's probably the kitchen window. Something synonymous with 80s films. A lot of Corey Feldman back in those, that era. He was hitting the top of the TV thinking, what the heck is going on? Why are there sirens still coming out of the television set? But in reality, it was down this road. Directly that way, and it all lines up. The window that's directly behind my head is the window that the camera was facing out of. Really good views of the water from up here. Again, very hilly. Oh, here's some church bells down there too. Now when I watched this in the film, I never realized how steep this incline is when they're riding their bikes down the side of the hill. Kind of reminiscent, that era, there's a lot of bike riding going on. I know E.T.'s another one. This is the Flavel House Museum. Flagpole still over there and everything. They were just coming, they were just coming down here very immense speed down this very step. Probably doesn't really show on camera how steep this hill is when they turn this corner right here, speeding along and all of them just head right down that way at a very quick speed. Beautiful building. Give a little perspective, here is part of that scene there. They're heading down the hill very quickly on their bicycles, turning that corner. Luckily the ground wasn't too wet. They could have slipped and slid down into the gutter. I'm not sure if they use this flagpole anymore. But everything looks the same through here, including the steps and the Metal, metal railing here. And it's not too far from here, in fact, just down the hill, a couple blocks, where Chunk is eating the food and he gets the drink, it smushes up against the side of the window. I think it's down on that corner. In fact, I can even probably even see it from here. All right, scratch that. I'm gonna still walk down there. It's down there just a bit. But as I'm walking past this, Astoria brand Columbia River Salmon trash can. Look at this, look what I just, this is the, this is the jailbreak scene right here. This is right next to this. It's all, it's all in the same area. Look at this, the whole opening sequence. The Fratelli's, you know, the jailbreak happens right here. Got the fire all along here. They have removed the little concrete pylons. There was like a, like a U-shaped concrete pylon right around here that he's like putting the gasoline on and all that, does that hysterical laugh. Man, this is awesome. 
No way. There's a Jeep right here. You gotta be kidding me. Theming on point. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was not expecting them to have the Jeep out front. That's great. All right, here's another little historical marker. This historic Clatsop County Jail features in the opening jailbreak scene. Police pursuit follows. Wayne's passed many familiar sites and neighborhoods in Astoria and Cannon Beach. It was a working jail up until 1976. This is pretty dang awesome. I'm not gonna lie. It's just like kind of all flashing back to me now all the times I've seen it. Looks like this building has been repainted as well. It was more like a beige, a beige color in 85. As shown here, he's got the gasoline can. The perfect jailbreak. Not only were those those little concrete pylons of like the square in the front there the fire was on, it looks like there used to be a power pole over to the side that's now gone. There's one angle around the back too when the chase goes around back, I'll show that. But yeah, there was like a power pole here. Now the power pole's over there, but it was like kind of where that marker is now. And I believe they turn up this street. So they turn up first, or no, seventh corner of Duane Street and 7th up this way leaving that cloud of smoke in the distance turning right up this hill I'm really glad they have the recreation of the vehicle there the getaway vehicle and after standing here you really kind of get the layout of the land a little differently see some things you don't see obviously see you don't really realize how steep these roads are until you're standing here again it probably doesn't even show up on my camera but kind of how steep that is he's like that car is giving it the gas just to get up the hill this is an active film museum also. I'm gonna go inside. ORV, four wheel drive. <laughs> Bullet holes the size of matzo balls. It says line forms over there, but there is no line, so I'm just gonna head in. They're open. Look at this, it's the same, same bar. I remember bars being on these windows. Another reference to 85. When you step inside, they have quite, they have a, few different items that were in the movie itself. There's this little thing here. It says the making of the Goonies. But then also this David statue, which was the one that wasn't broken when like a chunk like drops it off the table. I think evidently that was screen used. And then there's also, I don't think these are screen used, they're just reproductions of the key and the Lou Gehrig card that Chester Copper Pot had. Also the Astoria Library item over there. And then when you kind of walk into it, there's a lot of different cutouts of the characters from Goonies, as well as the jail cell. This is where they filmed the jail cell scenes and the jail break and all that. It all looks exactly the same. They even have some little recreations of the signage that he had around his neck and things like that in the cell itself, as well as another cell that has a bunch of different artifacts in here as well really well done kind of a kind of a neat little setup that they embrace it on this level because not a lot of places do but here in a story they really do embrace the goonies fully and embrace it and it's a whole it's a whole film museum in here as well talking about some of the other stuff that was filmed in the story over the years over the decades even since the goonies and i'm glad it was open i didn't even check beforehand to see what the hours were but it's open it was six dollars to get in and look at all this stuff. It's like I'm living I'm like I'm living out I'm living out the, the movie itself by being in here. Oh goodness, what are those? Definitely worth stopping inside there. I mean, you know, the recreation of the, the Jeep out front is pretty awesome also. They also had a, a lot of really good merchandise in there. I bought a couple things. I bought a sticker and a postcard. But they have a vast majority of, of items in there. Like a little kind of side room. But they are really embracing the film completely. A lot of t-shirts and things like that inside there as well.
you know, little knickknacks and whatnot. But what I ended up was got kind of really fascinated by, because I'm gonna go up to the house at some point. Here's a great postcard that I purchased of Richard Donner and Steven Spielberg up at the Goonies house. Again, correlation to where everything is. You know, just a lot of this stuff is all in the close proximity, including the jail, including where they were riding down the hill on the bike. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the hill down there to where more of the chase scene took place, like a block away. This bowling alley. I would imagine the window probably is still facing the same direction. The lower Columbia Bowl. Got some nice little murals here on the side as well. This horse, some boat, uh, fishermen out there, this horse on the beach. Here we got the iconic bridge. It's here in town. It looks pretty much the same here on the corner of Marine Drive and 8th Street. There's the window. There's the window right there. Oh my gosh, no way. Look at this. Oh yes, this is the freaking window. Unbelievable. Ah, so classic. Oh, look up here. That is so good. What if I could go inside? Stepping into this place is like stepping back in time. It's like you're like being transported into the 80s just with the carpeting when you walk in and then going in and looking at the retro lanes here from the bowling alley. I mean, it's just, this isn't even something from this decade. This is definitely a throwback and I love it. And they, it's also very interesting how nice everyone has been in embracing the movie itself. You know, if you're a tourist and you're here, Everyone really does it. They really do embrace it here. They have a whole little room kind of devoted to some of the stuff. They even have some like screen, screen grabs and stuff from the film. You can see exactly the angle and everything without having to do your own research. You can just show up and they have it all lotted out for you here at the, at the Lower Columbia Bowl. Even a little map from showing pieces, places, people from different areas all over the country and all over the world who have come here to visit as well and a little closer view of the, the Pepsi and the slushy that was in there and then the slice of pizza. Oh, gosh, what, what are the best characters? I mean, all, the thing that's great about the movie is the casting. I think Chuck might be my favorite. Data's good too. I don't know, they're all good. Sloth's good. It's just a great movie all around. It's just classic, quintessential 80s, that, that whole era. Nothing, nothing better than that. The window's still here. Alright, gotta move on to the next spot. <laughs> it's such a good artistic rendition there. That's where it all happened, right there. Got it all up on the on the edge. A lot of things you'll see around here are these logging trucks. I want to show some other stuff, maybe not in the movie, just to get the vibe of this place. Like this old ghost sign, Astoria Sign Company here. And even something else written on the side of this. Going over this bridge now, gotta go about a half hour outside of town. I will go back to Astoria though at the end. The final location will be the house. I'm looking forward to that, but I gotta go out to the beach first on a half hour commute. the scenic drive up to the top of this little overlook. Amazing. This, what I am looking at right now is absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got, let me show you this. real that is so dang cool the rippling waves there crushing against the rocks amazing even has a little identification here as well this park features prominently the goonies going along the location of the story in cannon beach 
the Fratelli's Hyatt Family Hideout, the Lighthouse Lounge, was temporarily constructed at Ecola Point. Mikey uses the rocky coastline here to gain clues to the location of One-Eyed Willie's treasure, and I believe the Lighthouse Hideout was down here. Although, you look online, and most people assume and state, reiterate what others have said, that the lighthouse was there, which I don't believe it was. There's a, there's a dog running by catching a ball. When they come up over the top of the peak, that kind of iconic view of them pulling their bikes up and you can see those rocks off in the distance, they run right by here over to the hideout where the lighthouse was, and you can even see when they run by, you can even see the landscape of these trees. Obviously, it's grown up a lot. If you see this little berm, this little little hill, this little mountain right there. So they run past that. Now, obviously, the interwebs and a lot of people have said that that is where the lighthouse was. Not true. And when you're standing here, you really can match it up that it doesn't, is not factual. They run right by here. There's like a pile of wood or something set dressing over this concrete and then they walk over here where the lighthouse and the hideout was notice the landscape there so that new building that everyone just assumes is where the lighthouse used to be notice the little berm there the little mount the little mound they run past that and over to the section where it was and once you're standing here you really can tell you really you really understand what you're standing here. It makes more sense. A couple of years ago, my friend Justin Scard was out here and he noticed that they, were, they had put set dressing over this. And when I was watching his video, I kind of thought, I don't know, like everything, everyone says that it was over there. But now that I am here in person and looking at it, it really does make a lot of sense that it was not down there. Now, granted, they did pull their bikes up over here and kind of jogged across. They were counting the steps over to the hideout and where the lighthouse was on the back side of the the spot which was down here but it makes sense because there's still the little areas there and in order to cover the concrete they put like chunks of no pun intended they put you know metal and pieces of wood and whatnot set dressing over the top of those as they kind of came across. So the lighthouse would have been like right in here in this in this area, the lighthouse and the little building. In fact, to confirm it any more, even more, they ran past that one area and they passed this rock and they continued off to the right towards where the lighthouse was. So this proves it even more with that rock there. Shown off in the distance right there. They would have continued taking their steps that way, passing that heading in from that direction. You gotta wonder if there's any foundation left of any of that. It was built, from what I've read, it was built specifically for the movie and then torn down directly after. It almost looks like it was an abandoned spot. But from everything I was seeing, it was built specifically for the film right over here in this corner. Can't go any farther than this because it would look at the beach. It is an active landslide. They have it all kind of roped off. I just love the visuals of this though. Man, that is so awesome. You just picture them pulling their bikes up over the edge there. I mean, it could have been up there, it could have been up here. I didn't really match that up completely, but I know it's in this general area. What a spot. Quintessential Goonies location. And directly behind me is the tree they walked past when they were counting the steps off to the hideout. Pretty glad the tree, well parts of the tree are still right there too where they pull their bikes up, they leave their bikes, they start walking up the side of the hill at quite an incline where the hideout was. So you got the tree over here which is, you know, seen better days, it's fallen apart, but it's the same tree. Starts off with kind of a crane angle, goes down, shows the hillside, shows the hideout over there and the lighthouse, the abandoned lighthouse that was behind it. But until I'm standing here, I never realized, so they're kind of hoofing it through here, taking the steps. 
and go up the hill, and that is quite the incline. You can even see part of the tree has fallen off, broken off. Screen used tree. Over there, it's like broken off and it's just over there dangling in the other pieces of the branch. Very unique tree. When you're watching that scene, it's unmistakable. This is the only one that looks like this out here in this area, so this has to be it. Looks like someone has trodden down there trying to recreate they're one of the goonies going past that and going up to the side of the hill. The same incline and everything. Definitely 100% not right there. So that's just, that, let's just debunk that. That's not where it was. The hideout was up there on the side of that hill. Really is incredible up here. Quite the drive up and down. In fact, the roads look just like they did. You can really picture him flying off the side of the hill. And the little girl's bike with the training wheels come flying off. Right up in this area. I will admit, I don't know exactly where that was, but this all looks all too familiar through here. Just a scenic drive up here. Take away the filming locations. Just driving up here on its own is quite the vibe. Beautiful through here. Made it down to Beachside now, where this gentleman says, walk over to the shore. So I'm going to. Thought about maybe even driving a rental down here, but I don't know if you could drive on this beach. However, this is where, well, you know what, I have to get up here and see. I think this is one of the spots too where they drive the car in here at the beginning and go into the race that's on the beach. Oh yeah, no motorized vehicles beyond this point. So good thing I found a parking spot. Oh man, look how epic this is. For real. So awesome. Yep, this is the spot. They drive right past the seawall and onto the beach. In fact, that restaurant is still behind them there where they kind of pull in. I kind of show where they're driving in. This would have been the view as they go in peel off onto, out of, off the concrete, onto the beach itself. And this would be that view I just showed. There's the restaurant behind them there when they go in. Interesting fact, the seawall was built in 1932, or maybe 39, 39. Built after a storm back in January of 1939. They stop right there for tellies. Mama pulls up, pulls up here, stops. Trust in your old mother boys then peels off, well, I keep using the word peel off, but it was saying it drives off into quite the congregation of vehicles and people right here along the shore. An easy getaway, smooth move by Mama. Also the same lady from, throw Mama from the train. She love that movie too. And they drive off that way. Escaped. It's so iconic. Just this view. Everyone's got their dogs out here. And just for a little correlation, I was up there looking down at the hideout up there. All right, I'm gonna head back into Astoria now. Got the final spot. I will say I saved the best for last, but. Okay, that bird's flying off. Back to Astoria. I'm gonna follow you, Bird. Made it back over to Astoria now, and I am on the block just behind me and up the hill where the 
monumental historic house is, the Goonies house. Now I've heard a lot of rumors, well, just based over the past couple decades of how the residents around here really don't really embrace it. But I'm seeing right over here, it says Goonies on the side of this one. This is not the Goonies house, but evidently some in this area don't mind it so much. And there are certain parking signs, so I parked on the other side of the street, but I'm not allowed to park on this side of the street. It says no parking there. And there's a sign up here that says you can't drive up the hill. So I'm gonna park at the bottom of the hill. And I can guarantee I'm not the first that has walked up this incline wearing this type of shirt. It is guaranteed that is the case. says open for residents and deliveries only, no outlet. Now it's kind of interesting. So you got a house here and then you got another house beside it. There's three houses side by side by side. Well, actually that's the third house. Then there's another house here. And then there would be the Goonies house. You could actually hear a bunch of seals down there. They sound like dogs barking, but in fact, they're seals. This view is gonna be amazing. I'm starting to get like the feels right now. Now in the last week or two, there's been some newsworthy events. This house here put a banner up that said, Goonies not welcome. However, this house here, which was screen used in the movie, it's been repainted and fixed up a little bit, has been repurchased. The former owner did not really care for those who were into the movie coming up on the property. But the new owner fully embraces it and has even been promoting the Goonies are welcome here. However, keep off the wall and out of the garden area. It is a little bit of a slight incline, a slight hike up the top of this hill. I can see why they chose this. Cause look at this view. It's like breathtaking. <laughs> Hey, you guys, Goonies, welcome. Amazing. You do not want you going past the fence. You got a little donation slot there. That is awesome. I'm kind of curious, it says private property beyond here, so I guess you can't go past here. Or maybe that means beyond the fence. Tough to tell, this is not the original fence that was in there. In fact, there was a contraption. I am going to say on this side of the, on this side of the line, but there's the window right up there. And here's Data's house where he went across and went through the screen door. Was it the screen window? He went through the screen. It was over there. Was it the door or the window? Gosh, now I had to like, I can't remember which one it was. Either way, Data's house was over here. He went across busted through there. They did stand up on the edge. In fact, Mikey was like right there being very angry at the, the guys who were going to turn this into a golf course, which I don't know why they would turn this into a golf course. This is like a breathtaking residential view looking down here. Now this place has private property past this gate. What was Data's house here? And I could definitely see why the neighbors probably would not enjoy people walking up this hill, but the new owner, I have to say, Really, really awesome that he is, you know, he's a big fan of the film and bought it because he grew up with it and he wants others to, to be able to come up here and see this. It's kind of interesting too, in the movie, and Bran comes out the side, gets Mikey and kind of drags him along. They get him a hug, says he's going to get, doesn't want him to get sick, sick out on the porch, drags him that way. I thought there was a door over here, but maybe the door has been remodeled, possibly. Also forgot something in my car that I purchased earlier that I need up here. So I'm gonna go walk back down to the car. This is when they're riding their bikes down here. In fact, they let the air out of, out of his bike at the top. I think there were some vehicles parked up here and he ended up going over here to the neighbor's house. He got the little girl's bike and then rode it in with the training wheels. So I'll go back to my rental car. I picked up a little item that I need to consume and snack on at the house. 
They've taken all the banners down there. This house had it put a banner up, and this house put a banner up. This banner's still up there. Now this was just last week. This house on the far end, two houses down from the Goonies house, put up Goonies Not Welcome on a banner. And then the one very right next door put this sign up facing over there. So this would be right next to where I'm standing, pointing at the neighbors. So evidently there's a little tension here in the neighborhood that may have subsided. So that was hanging there, and I don't know if they just came to peace with it, but they have removed the banners. The only banner remaining is at the actual house itself. You know, this has been something I've wanted to visit for a very, very long time but I just didn't for so long because the previous owners were really adamant about no one showing up here. Sometimes you get filming location places like that that just becomes known in the community. You know, a filming location, aficionados if you will, just don't go there. And this was one of the ones where it was blatantly told to everyone, do not come here. That has been reversed and the rumors are true. You can come here. It is, everyone's welcome. As stated by the banner up top. And that postcard I picked up at the Oregon Film Museum, the jail scene of Donner and Spielberg, standing right here. And this house was also in the news just a couple days ago. First, the banner dispute up here, like last week, but then two or three days ago, a guy did not heed the warning not to walk up there and he walked up here and he put a fish on the porch and then went out to sea i think he got went out i don't know what happened but he left here don't even know if he knew this was the screen use house but because there's cameras there's cameras everywhere here and they did film a lot of the movie inside here interiors as well obviously the attic scene was a set but the attic door is still in there the living room here the kitchen was used, and one of the bedrooms around the corner that way, they built a makeshift stairway to get to the top floor. There's another stairway, but they built a more decorative stairwell. They come running up and down. I guess Donner and Spielberg felt that would have looked a little bit better, but they use a lot of the interiors, including the porch and everything in here, especially the side door, which hence would be the front door, and of course, Chunk doing the truffle shuffle, which I'm sure the neighbors here and over there have no desire to see me do. I got my Goonies shirt on, and of course, I got my baby Ruth. I cannot be the first one who's gonna consume a baby Ruth here at this house. I'm not gonna do the truffle shuffle, no one wants to see that, but I figure some people might wanna see me consume a baby Ruth. Baby Ruth? I'm gonna eat a baby Ruth. This is a two-pack. If someone was here, they could share it with me. It's a win in Rome moment. And as I chew on this, finishing it up, I really hope that over time, and I kind of feel like the new owner is going to make this more looking like the movie. Maybe put the contraptions out front, the stump, the chunk stood on there. Man, this baby Ruth is really good. Maybe you put the wire going across, the datas. I believe this has been changed too. The front porch, been repainted, but the structure of the house looks the same. Pretty dang awesome. I was kind of thinking that while I was up here, other people would walk up here too. But I've been here for about 15 minutes and no one else has walked up the hill. So maybe not as many people show up here as I, th I thought they would. I don't know. I haven't had a baby Ruth in a long time. I should probably match up a couple photos real quick. Or maybe not. I think everyone kind of knows what the house looks like. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I don't need to go into detail. Maybe one day I could come back and get in the house. Not sure if it's an actual residence, if it's going to turn into like a rental. If it's going to turn into a museum, what's allowed, what's not allowed, time will tell. The good news is, new owner has taken this over and is very much into honoring the legacy of the film. And for that, I give it a big thumbs up.
Mm. It's a good candy bar. It's really good. Now if I could just find some rocky road. Hear them all down there? And back down the hill, kind of zoomed in on it. Hey, you guys. Goonies are welcome again. That's going to do it for today. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.